We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, busy and warm and sun and other words. Memorial weekend. Lots of labor. Um, lots of lots of, lots of stuff getting done in the yard. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. It's it's getting to summertime. Humidity sucks, but yeah, it is, it is. Have you had what what I call yellow snow season uh, in North Carolina yet? That's a spring thing, right? That's already happened. Oh, God, yeah, that that's long gone. Yes. Okay. If you've never if you've never gone. lived where Kyle lives or a similar place, they get how is it is it how how thick would you say the layer? of yellow pollen is where you are it it can get pretty thick it can get pretty thick i think you described it to me once as like when the water is like yellow snow is this a shenanigans episode uh maybe you've described it to me as like when the when like the the water is flowing down the street that the water almost turns yellow because all the pollen collects on this yeah that's disgusting it, it's basically it it, your roads it are peeing. The, on the streets it collects it on the the sidewalk on the cars it's i know but like the idea of it ba- your roads are basically peeing yellow screen. Is, is the issue yellow screen. yeah you say your your roads are peeing i think is what i'm trying to get across here yes yes all right okay. um, on, with that note it is our essex loop cast question <laughs> episode here um so we we got some questions here from our Sloop Cats down in our um, in our chat here. If you yourself want to ask a question, uh, hit us up on Discord. Hit us up on Discord. The links, as Jared has said in the past, is down in the doobly doos. Yeah, or just uh, join the Discord. dot Discord.thesloopcast.com. dot com. All right, let's let's get started with uh, Kabuto. Kabuto says here. Would you choose to acquire? Yes. Uh, Let's see here. He says, would you choose to acquire every dollar ever made in CFB to date for the purpose of making the world a better place? If it meant that college football would never happen again. Um, man, because here's the thing is that like that money is in many way used for, for good. Right. Um, Because it it goes back into universities, it goes back into scholarships. It helps make the. It helps pull kids who may not otherwise. That's too long of a problem question for Jared to follow. Uh, No, I took my Adderall today. We're good. Um, (laughs) But but without it, maybe. Um, It, you know, it provides opportunities for kids who might not have opportunity. Does it do it in the most efficient way? Could a, a different way be more efficient? Maybe. Um, that's a tough question. It's a tough question because, like, what charities are you giving it to and who are those charities benefiting? Because, like, again, we're talking about athletics, which in many cases gives academic and financial opportunities to people from disadvantaged backgrounds. So now if we take that money and we put it somewhere else, are we helping those same groups of people and how and how effectively and in what ways? Um, so it's, it's not, it's hard, it's hard to do this much more justice without getting into some real politicky areas, Kyle, maybe we move forward. Um, yes. But uh it's it's not charity can't just be seen as like money. Okay, what happens with the money after that? Yeah. Who who are you giving who are you giving your money to? Where are they using it and how effectively are they using it? So, yeah. I don't know. It's All right. All right. We'll, we'll move on to the we'll move on to the next question then, Jared. And that comes from the great Odin. All right, all right, all right. He says, "Are we in the wasteland?" Yes. yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah. And I and I did create and I did create a new channel in our Discord called the Wasteline. So if you have a topic that you would like us to spend an episode of, 
put it in the wasteland channel. There you go. Uh, but yeah, we're we're in it. We're right, in uh, it. Odin, Odin also asks, should the Big Ten go to 10 conference games per year? No. Again, we're talking about money, right? It's money. It's all money. Um, you you need you need those home games to make money. So that's why you bring in your Toledos and such of the world to come in with those home games and make money. Yeah, uh, it also, sense. but but also, sense. it's TV product too, because. Not only are you then taking potentially taking away a home game, but also think about all that time you need to fill on the Big Ten network and with Fox and everyone else. You've basically taken a September weekend, which you are you don't you get more money from TV? I'm getting there. Um, those September games. That, that's when the Big Ten Network gets its, that, that's where they get their fill. Because you go from having 14 games, 14 Big Ten games, down to having seven Big Ten games. That is half of the TV product. Now, it's not to say the Big Ten gets all of that because they don't. Some of it goes to ESPN and some of it goes to Fox. But when you get those extra games added on to the end, that's when the Big Ten Network gets its uh, gets its meals. That's what keeps that network alive. So it's not just the home games. You're also talking about lessening your TV product. Um, mm -hmm. And again, some of those games aren't Big Ten games. Some of those games, for whatever reason, are owned by, depending upon who you're playing, the ACC or whoever else, the, getting into like TV contract territory that doesn't matter. But it's it's not it's not just the home games that you're losing if you add another conference game. Yeah. Uh, Odin also asks here, why does the crew suck so badly this this season? Um, lost, lost their lost their goalie who they had when they won the championship game. Um, they're but mostly they're just not scoring. Um, yep. they. They traded, they traded of, away. They, they traded away one of their better um, scores. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's worth. It is worth noting that they injuries. were struggling really hard before that. Yeah, they were. They, they got they got key injuries too, and yeah, it's, they just don't have the offensive power that it looked like they had at the beginning of the season. But it, the reality of soccer in MLS is that you want to be good, but not too good. Cause when you get too good, your guys go to better leagues. You know what I mean? It's you're if you're an FCS school and the transfer portal is a thing. And one of your guys turns out to be fucking amazing. He's going to transfer to a, a big school. He's going to transfer to Ohio State, Alabama, even Virginia Tech, you know, to, to pick a mid-tier team um, because the opportunities are better and whatnot. So, yeah, it's you're when you're an MLS team, you're FCS at best. At best. So, again, if you're if you're too good, if your players are too good, they go play in England or Spain or Germany or. Uh, what, what's who has the best league in South America, Kyle? Would, would it be? I just want to say Brazil because they're the biggest. <laughs> but you know, they they go and they play elsewhere, where places put more money into their soccer clubs and pay the players more. Yeah, I'm I'm drawing a blank on the on the name. I, I really am. Yeah, I think the other leagues are more established too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But that's. They're more established means they make more money. They're established as establishment. They're, they're established establishment. Why does Ohio State have so much money? Because they do. Why does Ohio State have so much success? Because they do. It's self-fulfilling. That's simplistic. Of course, it's simplistic. 
but it would all come down, but it always comes back to money. If for whatever reason, everyone in the United States started loving soccer overnight, overnight, if everyone in the United States loves soccer as much as they loved American football, then these teams would have more money and could keep at the very least keep the homegrown talent in the United States and maybe start stealing players. Um, but again, even if you could compete financially with the premier leagues and whatnot, you still run into issues where these guys want to play against the best players. They want to play with and against the best players. So it all, so it is also self-fulfilling. It is also self-fulfilling. This, these are where the best players are because that's where the best players are. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is both prestige and money. It's both because one feeds the other. You can't look at either of those things on an island. Yep. All right. Um, we got a, we got a few questions from Buckeye Zach here. He asks, how well can Sparty utilize the transfer portal? Will it be hit or miss every other year? Great question. We're going to, we're, we're, we're still in the, we're still in the testing phases of that, right? We've only seen a few teams go full fledged into the transfer portal. Like we've seen Sparty do it. We have, we just, we don't have enough evidence to say, I mean, that's not, not enough information. We don't, we don't have a big enough sample size to say that's, yeah, I mean, that's the reality I mean, we'll, of the situation. We'll, we'll find out with um, Michigan state's um, running back replacement of Walker. They got two transfers. They have a transfer from Wisconsin and a transfer from, uh, Colorado as well. We'll see if either one of those pan out this year. Yeah. And like wholesale team replacements, which is borderline what we've seen Michigan state do in the transfer portal. Don't have a lot of sample size for that, but um, generally speaking, if we limit that, if we just talk about quarterbacks, we just talk about quarterbacks. I think generally that it works out more often than it doesn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it, 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 it is, we, we have, we have enough of a sample size there to say that more often than not, it works out. Yeah. Now a quarterback is a single player and a whole team, you know, a whole team is 22, but even if it's not 22 players, even if it's half, even if 10 of your players are transfer portal players, 12, 11 of your players are transfer portal players. You're you're there's a lot more room for a medium there. Um, I think it would be very interesting to see like position by position. How often do transfer portal players work out? Yeah. All right. Uh, another question for Buckeye Zach here. Do you suspect Harbs will be leading his winged helmeted blue bald boys into a six and six disaster? after last year, last season's historic, in quotes, year. Well, let's look at their season, Jared. Let's look at, let's Screw look it. at the Screw schedule. Bring, it up the schedule. Bring up the schedule. Right. Let's do it. All right. Colorado State, win. Hawaii, win. UConn, win. So 3-0. And they're already talking about playoffs after those three historic wins. Sure, sure. Someone's a Heisman finalist already. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. The next game's here. Uh, 15, well, hold on, real quick. Uh, going back to the transfer portal thing. Fifty-nine percent of transfer players found a new school. Thirty-three of the fifty-nine. Thirty-three percent of the fifty-nine percent are active. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's from the. That's from the perspective of the player. I was talking more about from the perspective of the team. Like what happens if you do a wholesale replacement of a team through the transfer portal? Um, that's more of the experience of individual players. Um, and that, that obviously is what it, here's the thing though. Like players just don't, 
take take a take a Kavon Pope situation where he wasn't kicked off the team. He entered the transfer portal. You know what I mean? Like, meanwhile, like Justin Fields entered the transfer portal. There's. I, I don't trust raw data on on numbers like that because there's a lot of different motivations for entering the transfer portal. So raw data doesn't do a lot for me as far as that goes. Yeah. All right. Sorry. Sorry, Kyle. Michigan's schedule. Let's go through it. Okay. Uh, so Colorado State, Hawaii, Connecticut, three games. Win, win, right, win. Maryland. Win. At Iowa, I suspect this to be a night game. I, I don't, I don't, I'm 50-50. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll move on there. At Iowa. Or excuse me. I, I'm sorry. At Indiana. Sorry. At Indiana. We'll call that a win. Home to Penn State. Let's let's count that as the other half of the 50-50 with Iowa. Okay. Home to their... So uh, we're big, at one loss right now, then? Yep. Yep. Home to their big brother. Um, God, I want to call that a loss. Mm-hmm. I do, too. I'd feel better uh, if it too. was in in the green side of the state. I do, but too. Yeah. Uh, Should we call uh, that a 50-50 as well? I'm going to call that a loss. I'm going to call that a okay. loss. Okay. At, at at Rutgers, win. Home to Nebraska, win. Uh, home yeah. to Illinois, a win. Yeah. And then their last game's a loss. Yeah. Um. And by so the way, it. I'm that's just gonna. So that's that's three losses. That's three losses. Um, and I'm also just gonna throw a stinker in there. Like just a game that they absolutely should win, but don't. And I don't know if it's I don't know if it's Indiana. I don't know if it's if it's Penn State. Well, Rutgers, Penn State yeah. I, is is was a 50 50 <laughs> uh, Nebraska Rutgers doesn't matter. There's a game in there that they just don't show up to and get upset. So right, let's just say we throw in another loss there. That's eight and four. Yeah, it's an eight, eight four, four season. Four. Which, by the way, still feels generous somehow. Even after going through the schedule and then just magically turning one of those wins into a loss, still feels generous to me. But God, that that out of conference schedule is bleh. Yeah, there's literally nothing there. There's it's almost there as bad as nothing it, there. It's almost as bad as their colors. All right, uh, let's see. Next question here: How badly are we to destroy Notre Dame? Bad. Uh, uh, likely bad. bad. <laughs> How badly are we to wreck the Big Ten? Um, wreck the Big Ten. Win the Big Ten, very likely. Very, very likely. Wreck the Big Ten. Wait, uh, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned in our previous episode, watch out for Penn, or excuse me, for, for Sparty. I think Sparty is going to have a pretty good year here. Uh, I think we'll be really competing to get maybe that second best team the second best in the in the division or well, really in the conference so do you move uh, up Re- the second Re- Re- you said third Re- in Re- the last episode i did i said compete to to get to that second fair uh wreck wreck is maybe too harsh but how badly will oh, yes. will our state win the big 10 i think i think i think easily they can all right, Kyle. Let's go through Ohio State schedule, and we're we're not we're not doing wins and losses. We're doing wrecked or not wrecked. All right, wrecked or not wrecked. So it's a two yeah, yeah. plus two plus um, uh, possession game. Okay, so eleven points. Yes. Uh, uh, doesn't feel like doesn't feel like a wreck. Can we call it fourteen? Can we say two touchdowns? Okay, fourteen, two touchdowns. All right, here we go. Notre Dame, well, Big Ten. We're doing Big Ten, so yeah. But we're let's do the entire. Yeah, but we're having fun. Let's do the entire schedule. Okay, Notre Dame. I think wrecked. I think that's less. Wrecked. Okay. 
I think 10 points is is good for me. But uh, Arkansas State, wreck. Toledo, wreck. Yeah. Home to Wisconsin, wreck. Home to Wisconsin, wreck. Wreck. Yeah, wreck. Uh, Rutgers, wreck. Wreck. At Sparty, wreck. I, I I I know we all feel very happy for Sparty. Uh, I don't I'm, I don't I don't give a fuck. Wreck I'm, Sparty. I'm, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to give a two possession but less than two touchdowns. Uh home to Iowa. That that feels that just that feels very that just no just just go back re- re- rewind for a second. That's real fence city of you. I want I want I want you to know that that's that's a, some real fence sitting happening happening on that. Whatever, Jared. Uh no no here here's an interesting one. Home to Iowa in between Sorry, two, did you say home? Home. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish this before you make a state. Before you make your statement here. These three games, at Sparty, home to Iowa, at Penn State, in between two road games, could be it. Could be that that one game that Ohio State may may sleep over on. But I still go what incorrect. Happen- what, what? I'm sorry. What happened the last time Iowa played Ohio State? Yeah, they got wrecked. Are they going to sleep on Iowa? Probably not. Wrecked. I'm just saying. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Where's the game again? I'm just saying. Yes, they have Odin, a bye week in there. Don't don't you don't confuse. Right. Don't can, don't bring facts into this. Where where is the game again? <laughs> it is in Columbus. It is wrecked. Not it is not on the road wrecked. at a night game. Yes, wrecked. All right. All right. At Penn State. Revenge. We're not just talking like regular wrecked. We're talking revenge level wrecked. This, right. this At is, Penn- this is, this is Maryland after they ratted on Chase Young level wrecked. That's going to happen in that game. At Penn State. It, it is. It, did, it is. In ha- it is in Happy Valley. But I think I saw something, and I don't know if this is true. It may not have um, whiteout for this game. Well, it's, I don't think it's at night. Didn't they, do we have a time on this? No, nope, not yet. Not yet. If it's a, all right, I'll, okay, I'll say this. I'll say this. If the sun is out, wrecked. ABC will take it to prime time. Mm, could be, could be. If the sun is out, it is a wrecked. Oh boy. Didn't like that phrasing. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Moving on here. So at Northwestern. Do we know that ABC has rights to it yet or not? No. That's that. I haven't been following the TV stuff. Not yet. It is still, everything is TBD still. Nothing's set yet. I haven't, I haven't been following that closely as far as the TV rights and all yeah, that. It, it has not yet. It has not yet. So moving on, Jared, um, at Northwestern. Ah, uh, wrecked. Yep. Home to Indiana. Home to Indiana, wrecked. wrecked. At Maryland. By the way, is, is it weird that I actually like Ohio State more if it's in Indiana? <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. At Maryland. Wrecked. And Michigan. Wrecked. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, there's no hesitation on that. There is zero hesitation on that. Wrecked. So, Kyle, uh, p- p- pick a team for the Big Ten West for the championship game. Just pick one. Whoever you just. Uh, I'll go with Iowa. We got we to gotta vote for Wisconsin, Minnesota, another Wisconsin. Um, of course, of course he said Wisconsin, which is a little local flavor. Um, <laughs> so in a okay. championship game, Wisconsin gets wrecked in a championship game. Iowa gets wrecked in a championship game. Minnesota gets wrecked Kyle. So to go back to the original question, does the big 10 wreck the Penn St- uh, wreck the big 10 this year? I guess so. I guess the answer is yes. Bring out the fucking wrecking ball. All right, all right, moving on here, Jared. Uh, what is your very, don't, very don't 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 bring a don't bring an Illa to a buck fight. 
Odin. Don't bring an Illa to a buck fight. Is your very, get, get your Illa very way out of here. Early score prediction for the game in November. Anything, anything less than a hundred to nothing is unacceptable. <laughs> you're, you're a sympathizer if you say anything less than a hundred to nothing. <laughs> uh, but realistically, I'd say forty nine to twenty. And that's I'll, still I'll a get, wreck. I'll give I'll give you the twenty, but you, you gotta take that forty nine up. To sixty nine? Yeah, there you go. There you go. I was uh, getting there. Yeah, yeah. All right, um, all right moving on here. Uh, and by the way, they the missed the I for the record, they missed a two point conversion. They didn't kick any field goals. There will be no are, field goals. There will be no are, field goals. They yeah, they they things? tried they tried to they they tried to pull a Woody Hayes and go for two at the end and then no oh, they, they they messed up the snap. <laughs> what are fun things to do during the wasteland when not involved in a household project? Oh, I was about to say do some household projects. Um, when not doing a household project in the wasteland, um, the zoo is nice. You yeah, the, the Columbus, Columbus Zoo, zoo? Is, it's, it's a very nice zoo. It's a very and if you're nice down zoo. in Cincinnati, Cincinnati Zoo is not bad either. If you've never been to the Columbus Zoo, the Cincinnati Zoo is not bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have we have two Hall of Fames in the state. We have a, both a football and a rock and roll Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame. Hall yeah. of Fame. Yeah, we Cedar have a Point. Cedar Point. We have a Kings Island. Uh we have minor league baseball teams. Uh, Ooh, we have yeah, got, the Clippers, um, the, the Mud Hens. Is that? You got the, yep. Yep. You got the crew. You got the crew for soccer. I was still going through baseball. You, you, you made it sound like they were a minor league soccer team, the way you, you structured that. Um, there's also a minor league. There's more minor league. There's a lot of minor league baseball teams around. Um, there's the, there's the Guardians and the Reds. You could go see the Guardians or the Reds. I hear they're uh, fun minor league teams. Um, the Dragons. Uh, is that is that Dayton? Is that the Dayton, yeah, that's Dayton minor that, league isn't team? That Dayton? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, lots of baseball you can go see. If you want to get drunk and eat some wings or something, I don't know. Um, Cause I feel like that that's the point, right? It's just to go outside, stare at something while you eat overpriced food. That's, that's the point. Um, All right, Jared, uh, let's get into some more here from Columbus. Odin. Columbus have a, has a lovely, lovely park system. I just want to say that. I don't think people talk about it enough. Columbus has an amazing park system. Um, for, for a city that you'd never want to go outside for three or four months of the year. Uh, we, we actually have like a really, really nice park system. So I just want to say that the Columbus park of roses is my personal favorite. Odin wants to know how shitty of a quarterback do you have to be to get cut by a USFL team mid season? Uh, I, I didn't, didn't we put a, didn't we put a ban on USFL questions last time? Oh no! Did I know you? we're just dunking. I know we're just dunking on Shea Patterson. So uh, okay, dunk on Shea Patterson. Uh, but and then th Odin, th Odin's dunking. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, that's it. Just like I know we're just okay. dunking on Shea Patterson here, but well, uh, no, no, well, no, no, no more at the USFL questions. I'm done with USFL. Well, Odin. Well, Odin. Uh, one more, one more question here, to though, Jared. Um, Odin's dunking on Mayfield and says, "Will Mayfield be a Michigan Panthers starter next year?" No, that's 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 a, that's a quick drop. That's a real quick. I think I think in the right system, like Mayfield's a playoff level quarterback in the NFL, with the right support and the right in the right system with the right support, uh, and maybe a little bit of buy in from him. I, I think he needs to take the chip off his shoulder. Um, I think would be the biggest thing he could do for himself. Um, but he's but he's not a guy who is going to like load up a crappy team on his back and take them to the playoffs. I think he's a suitable quarterback with the right tools around him. 
I don't know. Where, where, where would you think he'd be a good fit at? I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> the problem uh, is he doesn't. He doesn't. Ooh, Seattle. Seattle's the, not. When I talk about Seattle's the right good. team, when I talk about the right team, that that right team probably doesn't need a quarterback. Yeah. Facts. All right. Facts. Uh, let's see. Next next question. Who will the interception leader be on the team this year? On for Ohio State or Ohio State. Um, Cam Brand, no, probably one of the safeties. McAllister, Proctor. I'm gonna say I, one of the safeties. Gonna, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll go with I'll go with Proctor. I'll go with Proctor. Yeah, because yeah, it, it won't be. Like my okay, so who's your favorite defensive one back of the on the three safeties? One of the three safeties. Um, yeah, like Denzel Burke is great, but I just don't think I think they're just Nobody's gonna be like, gonna okay, throw. we're not gonna throw on that side of the field. You know yeah. what I mean? So I don't feel like he's gonna get enough opportunities to pick off balls. Um, whoever's playing the other corner at the time, which probably is Cam Brown, um, at least maybe on a rotational basis. Um, I wonder how much the linebackers could play into that. Uh, Odin says chambers. Uh, I think the, I think here's a problem with the linebackers is I think the linebackers are going to rotate a lot this year. So uh, I think the safeties that we're not super deep at safety. So I think you're going to see, you're going to see a lot of the same safeties on the field constantly. And I think they're going to be in the best position to pick off some balls. I think the opposite corner is going to have a lot of rotation. No one's going to throw at Burke. The linebackers are going to be in a heavy rotation this year. Um, I, so pick a safety. Um, McAllister, I think a good answer. Proctor, I think a good answer. Um, I, I, Ronnie is obviously a great answer. Um, pick a safety. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll stick with my original and say McAllister, but Hickman is also a good answer. All right. Uh, what answers on the team do you expect to have before fall camp starts? What answers before fall camp? Mm -hmm. Before fall camp. God, I don't know. I don't feel like there. I don't, I don't know what answers I still have that can be answered before fall camp. I have lots of answers I want to have after the Notre Dame game. Um, but I, I don't know. I feel like we, for the most part, know who the starting 22 are. Like, are there any, are there, are there any big surprises there? Because a lot of the guys were just saying rotational, right? What about the tight ends? A rotational. That, that's the thing. Like, it's tight end by committee, defensive end by committee linebacker by committee uh oh, that's, that's a good point that's a good point odin the too deep for the offensive linemen that's a that's a good point there is no too deep for the offensive linemen there there's a there's a backup there are, there are a couple backup guards um we already know we already know who the starting fullback is odin yeah yeah and, i mean i mean there is none is the answer <laughs> Rossi's a tight end. Get over it. Pull back. Rossi's a tight end. Get over it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I feel like I, I feel like I need, what I need to learn at this point, what I really need to learn at this point is the things we have to see during the Notre Dame game. How good is this new look offensive line? How good is this defense? And I don't think Notre Dame's necessarily going to give us the biggest test as far as the new defensive scheme, but Ohio State's defense looked like crap against crap offenses last year. So, and that's not even to say Notre Dame's a crap offense. I just don't think that they're a great offense. Um, or at least there's a lot of question marks on that offense. You know, they could develop into a good one by the end of the year. 
I just don't see them being like a well-oiled machine in week one. Um, I would describe them as anemic. New right. new players, new coaching staff. Um, worst quarter, probably a worst quarter, but potentially, yeah. Um, but again, may, maybe that quarterback is a good quarterback in the new system. Sometimes a quarterback just needs to exist in the correct system. But again, question marks, question marks, lots of question marks on the offense and not necessarily reason in those question marks for a level of optimism that would have me saying they're going to be well-oiled machine in week one. Yep. Maybe by November, they're a decent offense. I just don't see that happening in week one. Um, so that that's sort of what I so but I think the real test I want to see I want to see offensive line I want to see what the offensive line does against Notre Dame in week one that that to me I think is the biggest thing I'll be watching and I just don't feel I, I won't feel good about the offensive line until I see that game all right last Someone, question we have but we have, have like a question of the day in the discord server just in our Ohio State channel our one of our mods sun card does a question of the day in there and he asked the question, you know, if you could steal a starter from, if you could steal a starter from another big 10 team, who would you steal? And the, I gave answers that are offensive linemen because I'm scared to death about the depth. And I, I, I'm scared at a new left tackle. Although I think Paris Johnson will do great. Um, I, 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 my my two answers I gave were both offensive linemen. Center from Minnesota, tackle from Northwestern. Um, th those are those are my two answers. And I that's why I am from, this most scared right now. And a tight end from Iowa is my answer. There you go. All right, last question we have here: uh, How many scholarship players does USC have? Um, not eighty-five. No, you are correct. Anybody want to guess? Because I have the answer. Oh, Kyle looked it up. Kyle looked it up. Wow, uh, you guys. <laughs> it's not that low. <laughs> it's not 40. It's not, it's it's not, not 67. Is it 69? No. Okay. Um, well, I it's actually not short. that bad. It's well, actually not it's that because they've been adding guys through the transfer portal. They were yeah, super they short a, on they players. Bunch. They added a bunch. Yeah, it's it's 81. Oh, so they're almost up to full strength. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and they just added the pit wide receiver. So that brought them up to 81. And I'm sure and they've added all sorts of guys to the transfer portal. And there's no reason to get to 85 if you don't feel like if 82 isn't going to be a contributor this year then you don't need to go to 82. Um, yeah. Give a couple of your walk-ons who have been with the program forever, some scholarships, get up to 85, but then keep, keep the rest of those back and sign a big recruiting class. While the hope is still high. They have, again, again, this is all because of the transfers they have, Jared. In their, I'm not reading that. Their, in their um, chart, their scholarship chart, 39 sophomores. Damn. Damn. 39. So next year, watch. <laughs> Give USC one year here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm high on the future of USC. I'm actually kind of high on the present of USC. Um, how many will transfer out? Uh, if you're USC, not the uh, not the ones you care about. Like that's that that's that's the cruel reality of big boy college football. Yeah. Not the ones you care about. The ones that weren't going to start anyway. And honestly, that's what you want. The guys who aren't going to start and aren't aren't going to contribute. Everyone oversigns now. We used to be get real bitchy about oversigning, about how SEC schools would force kids out of the program and yada 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 and guess what everyone can do it now and because the players want to go play somewhere 
the, the players are enabling the over signing all by themselves. And by the way, like they're they're as long as they're acting of their own accord and as long as they are doing what they want to be doing, which is playing football. Good on them. Go do it. But basically everyone oversigns now. The the transfer portal has solved the problem of oversigning. Is it to the benefit of the players? Probably not, but they're they're making their choices for themselves. As you know, as Gangland pointed out, only like 55%, was it 55, 59 of players 59. entering the transfer portal are actually finding homes in is that was was that number specifically for FBS college football or for college football in general? Do you know, Gangland, off the top of your head? Oh, is that all sports? The the wow. transfer portal number you gave earlier, that 59%. Is that just football? Is that finding a home that was for football specifically? When you say find a new home, does that equal a FBS program? Like if they sign to an FCS program, does that count? Scholarship at a university, period. Only 55% of them are finding new homes. Damn. 59, excuse me, 59% of them are finding new homes. Yeah, see, I I have to question why are those guys entering the portal? Are they entering the portal because they're having because they're having academic issues? Um, are they doing it because so uh, yeah, um I would love to deep dive those numbers if I could. Uh, I'm not going to. I don't have that kind of time. Um, but yeah, that, that, that's interesting. Um, that you basically enter the transfer portal and then just don't go back to being on scholarship. That's tough. Um, and again, you have to wonder what the motivation is for those 40%. All right, Kyle. Um, is that the end of the episode? Yeah, that's it. That's all the questions we have here. Uh, catch everybody back next week for um, some more shenanigans. And for those who are part of the uh, Sloop Cats team or Sloop Cats family, catch you guys Wednesday for a Sloop Cats only episode. Are we moving that? To We might be moving that. We might be moving that. Uh, we, won't, we won't need to talk about it right now. We don't need to talk about it right now. It's it's fine. Hi, Austin. We're just ending. Uh, so, Kyle, I'm sorry. Did I already ask you about I ask Sloop Cat or uh, Kyle's corner? No, you did not. I have to. I have to <laughs> pee. I have to pee really bad. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Please say no. Mm, mm, let me think. Uh, no, oh, I really son don't. Of a bit. <laughs> uh, I okay. All right. Uh, uh, we played the works on Monday. We'll play the works again on Tuesday. Uh, so I with, should, I uh, should. the works uh, that is spelled with an E W E R K S the works, uh, they're a jam band uh, out of, out of uh, the Ohio. I think it's either Dayton or Columbus. I can't remember which, but uh, yeah. Uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the works.